Good morning, everyone. I wrote this poem a couple of years ago while thinking about how we raise our children in our culture. I also think it's an appropriate poem for the challenging times we find ourselves in today. In the first part, I look at how from the beginning, we receive so much input from our parents and our family and friends and the culture around us. And it deeply shapes how we think and act and who we are in this world. By the end of the first part of the poem, I feel drawn to ask a dark question. But don't worry, I don't leave us hanging there because that's not what my poetry or this teaching is about. In the second half of the poem, I answer that question by exploring a different kind of thinking that has always been true. And I believe as we become aware of it and apply it in our lives, the more we can change and grow individually and together. This is called question answer. If so much, of what we've learned entered our lives before we even grasped language. If so much of the world's unending influence, both subtle and brutal, breached our childhood defenses so deeply that it became the foundation of how we think and feel and love and live and hold right and wrong in our hearts. If so much of what we unconsciously believe must, by its very nature, rise up through us and become the color and fabric of our lives, then what hope do we have? If it's true that our need to grow beyond our own limitations is so old, that not even the stones can remember when it began? And if it's true that when we take something so deeply into our hearts, it enters our blood? And if it's true, the only way to move beyond our own old limiting life story is by creating a new, more compelling story to take its place. And if it's true, we are all born into some kind of shared history, yet we are each free to go where we've never been before every time we have a healthy new thought. If it's true that what we give our attention to does expand and we can learn to grow in ways other than through suffering and lack. If it's true that we are always standing at the growing edge of our own existence, and if it's true, that we are all meant to be the servants of excellence, then we can create our own redemption. Oh my. Oh, thank you so much, Doug. That is my talk for today. And so I'm glad you all came. Goodbye for now. No. <laughs> that was amazing. You know, uh, the old stone can't even remember when this belief started. It was something like that. Uh, that's exactly what we're talking about today. And our topic for today, of course, is um, creative action. Creative action. And um, the thing that... Uh, the things that, that, that it's so, I'm just like still, you know, reeling from Doug's beautiful poem because it's just right exactly what I want to talk about today. And I, you know, um, we had another topic and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to risk, okay. I'm going to risk some of my beliefs here and, and I'm going to have confidence in that risk that you love me through sharing what I believe. Because isn't it true that sometimes when we share what we believe, we can get condemned for that to the point where we don't even know if it's safe to speak out. I think right now, particularly, 
we have a lot of shame, blame, and framing going on. And you've got to think this way, and you've got to say it this way. And if you don't say it this way, then you're not this, and that you're not that. And and I don't. I, am I the only one going through this uh, feeling? If you're with me, just go ahead and raise your hand a little bit if you're understanding what I'm saying. So so I I I want you to understand also that when I speak today, I speak from a place where I have been condemned. Uh, by what what I say, and and when I was condemned by what I say, I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have the 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 confidence that I could say what I say and stand with that. And and so I'm I'm gaining confidence, and I think we all are right now because so much is changing so fast. We're having to look at how we feel about things and what we think about things, and we're having to say, "Wait a minute, is that what I believe? Is that what I believe?" And I think for some of us, we may be even afraid to say what we believe or how to say it for fear that we may hurt someone or cause harm by our words. So please, please understand where I'm coming from today, that I'm taking a risk. So our topic was, I am not free until we are all free. And I understand the meaning of that. I absolutely understand the meaning of that. And I want to commit my life to freedom for all. That means I want to behave that way. That means I want to think that way. That means I want to speak that way. That means I want to live that way. And I want you to know that about me. But what I'm going to say is that I am using people first language. You know, I've talked about this before, where we have the I am practice, right? The spiritual practice, the I am. I am old. I am fat. I am a racist. I am homophobic. I am, are you with me? And that, uh, and that the I am practice is really important because it is causal. What does causal mean? It creates. We create out of our beliefs. And so remembering that what we say is already backed by a belief. So we can tell what we say, we can tell by listening to what we say, what we believe. I've said this many times because it starts with forming a belief. And what was so beautiful about Doug's poem was he was talking about these old beliefs. And I am too. And I think that many of us are saying the exact same thing, but we're using different language. And some language is easy to hear, and some language is palatable, and some language is offensive, and some language is hurtful, and some language can be, you know, bullying, and some language can be accepting, and some language can be teaching. And I want to know what I'm creating from my languaging, what I believe. And, you know, I learned people language, people first language with my family because my family has the experience, the genetic component on chromosome four of this genetic disorder called Huntington's disease. And so what I learned also about working in the hospital for 34 years is that we can literally label ourselves with our disease or our prognosis or our diagnosis. I am. I have COPD, I have hypertension, I have diabetes. I mean, it's almost like saying I am. And what we can say is I am perfectly perfect, complete and whole, and I'm having the experience of the, this disease, and I am then in mind restoring my belief system to know more that I'm perfect, complete and whole, and have that manifest in my life. And that is how we heal, correct? right? There's nothing to be healed, only God to be revealed. And so I realize how important it is right now that we're learning about these old beliefs that, that, that are in our rocks, that we don't even know when they started, right? 
we know, for example, racism started well before we all even got here, that the First Nation was already here. I know that from my own, my own people in, in the Hawaiian Islands, my mother was Hawaiian, and I know that, that they, were, they, they, were, they had a culture and then, and then they also were invaded, right? By people who thought they knew better. And so it's very important to do what they're doing, to do what Native Americans are doing, to do what the Hawaiians are doing, to do what the African Americans are doing, to do what the Jew Jews are doing, is to take back your authenticity. Take back the I am, take back the I am freedom. I am equity, I am equality. I am perfect, complete and whole. Do you see the difference between that? Now, I find it very interesting that when I reframe into the positive, I'm attacked by people who are not ready to hear the positive. They want to hear, they want to, they want to be heard first. They want to be, they want us, they, I, I am they. I want you to hear my pain first, please. I want you to hear where I have been discriminated against, to where I have been uh, left out, rejected to where I have been canceled out. I want you to hear that first. I want to teach you about my experience. And then, and then I want to create a new experience. I think we're all saying the same thing, correct? But it is how we're saying it. As religious scientists, we know that what we say is causal. Words are things. So I want to use people first language. So when the topic was, I am not free until we are all free, that's, that's again the I am. And today I'm not using that topic. If I were to say it, I would say I am free and we're all free. And, and we know in religious science that when you say things that are not actually showing up that are not like actually our experience right here right now, that can be a very non-compassionate. That's like saying there is no death when someone's sitting in front of you with a terminal illness. So we are here in this, not conundrum, but come on guys, we, we have a lot going on right now. I mean, we, we have so much going on right now to, 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 to digest, to speak into. We, we, have, we, have, we have so much going on. We have, our, 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 we have life itself with a, with a pandemic. We have, we, have, we have everything. We have so much going on right now with, with all of this amazing and wonderful revelation of equity and equality. Like, what does it really mean? And about, you know, respect. And there's so much going on right now that we have to language. That, that we, 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 have, we have huge, dirty little secrets around these things. We have narratives that have been, been indoctrinated into us culturally from the old rock time. I, myself... I am 70 years old, as you know, just had that wonderful birthday. And I, I was taught culturally all of this. I was taught to believe that my religion was the only religion, that my sexual orientation was the only sexual orientation, that my, my political beliefs, my values were the only way to think and feel. Are, are, did you have that as well when you were growing up? So, so we have work to do. We have, we have to educate ourselves. And right now we're at the, the peak of, of new ideas on, on how to have these conversations. And golly gosh, some of it is is coming at us kind of in your face languaging have you have you had that experience just kind of you know this is 
if you don't think this way, you are ignorant, you are racist, you are a white supremacist, you are that, you are, you are, you are homophobic, you are. There's so much I amness going on. Isn't, isn't that so? And I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm calling people out. I'm calling them by names. I'm condemning. And so how can I condemn you if I'm not condemning myself first? Because I can't do anything out here that isn't going on in here, right? So I'm trying to figure out a language here, guys. And, and I, I, wanna, I want it, this language to be so powerful that it changes the world. It ch I, I want to change the world, so i got to figure out what language is that. And, and if I speak out loud my la in my language and I offend you, that's not going to be helpful. And, and, and if you are forcing me to speak in your language, that's not helpful to me because I just get, I just get rebellious. Anybody else? Do you get rebellious when someone says, you know, you got to say it this way? Well, that's not, a, that's not the way you say it. You say it this way. Well, you better be reading this book. Well, you better be studying this. Well, you better, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to be using people first language. I am equity. I am equality. I am freedom. I am love. Thus creating the expression and experience of those principles. Does that make sense? We create from our words. I literally had the experience with my colleagues where I received a communication and it was in the negative, in my mind, denounce, I denounce this, I call out this, and I just translated it <laughs> and said, well, I announce, and then I announced that principle that I want to bring into form, and I was censored. Censored. You are not allowed to do that in my own in my own circle of colleagues shocking so so i i'm a rebel i get it i get it i get it that i like things positive i get it that i want to create positivity i get it that i am not a disease i am perfect complete and whole and yes yes this was this is my experience I get it that I want, I want it to be in the positive because name calling and labeling does not work for me. Labeling and name calling does not work for me. And I don't even know why I'm doing it because I don't even realize I'm doing it. I'm just like sending out darts. That's a, he's a racist. He's a white supremacist. Well, I, ha I have to be a racist and a white supremacist if I'm doing that. I can't do the I am out there unless I'm doing the I am in here. I'm exhausting myself. And I'm doing a lot of forgiveness for myself. Because I'm relearning these. I'm taking those old rocks and I'm, I'm breaking them apart and finding out, wow, Sharon, wow, you, you were raised with that idea. You were raised with that. I, I have found myself having to relearn things because the old beliefs don't work. It, they don't work for a world that works for everyone. I'm sorry. And so I will identify racist, anti-Semitic, homophobic thinking statements and behaviors in myself and others without condemnation. In other words, I am not going to be calling you your behavior. I'm not going to be calling you your behavior. I'm not going to call you your statements. I'm going to call out that your statements and your behaviors are not working for a world that works for everyone. I'm going to call it out, but I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to call you those names. And I don't want people calling me names. And I don't want to be labeled because every day I can create a world that works for everyone and I can create my own language and I do want to be heard and I want to be understood. But I'm not going to be attached to that because then I'm attached to your reaction to me. 
And I can't afford that anymore. I can't afford to be afraid of you. Because I believe this or I believe that or I want to say it in this way. Does this make sense? Compassion cures condemnation. Instead, I will trust in the power vested in me to change the world. There is so much shame, blame, and frame growing from anger. The fear behind the anger can be healed by revealing faith. Faith in myself and each other and foremost. Here it is. Faith and fear cannot occupy the same space. And what is so funny is to watch me shrink in front of a bully. And even a righteous bully. I mean, I, I am so funny. I'm like a turtle. Like, I just bring the head and the legs in, and I'm just like, whoa. You can't see me now, right? I'm just a shell. <laughs> and then I'm thinking and thinking. I'm like, wait, what happened here? Our teaching says that we create from words. Wait, what? If I wanted to reframe something, I should be able to. We have to be very careful here, though, because we, we at the same time cannot discount what's happening right now. It's very powerful. I'm, I'm saying this is a scientific process, guys. This is a creative action. Creative action is causal. Creative action is a spiritual process. We can't not speak. But what I'm asking myself to do is I'm asking myself to, to create a new language. And if you don't like my language, I need to be okay with that. Because you're, people are saying, you've got to speak out, that if you don't speak out, you're, you're in agreement. But then I speak out, and it's like, you can't say that. <laughs> and so I, I'm gaining confidence here in my, in my spiritual beliefs, guys. I'm, I'm gaining confidence in how I articulate, how I create, how I'm breaking apart those rocks that, that Doug talked about so that I can create a life, a life that, that I feel like I am in integrity with my faith. Yes, I'm going to speak in the positive. Yes. I am freedom. Yes, I am equity. Yes, I'm going to behave that. Yes, if I am equity, then I cannot be other than equity. So when my behavior shows up because I am creating this, I'm not, it's going to feel bad in my body. I'm creating an intention that is, if it doesn't match my behavior or my words, something's going to shift in me. Like I am saying, I am equity. What does that mean? I have to study it. Remember when I said, I don't even know what justice is? And I've got to study it. I've got to understand it because I don't even know what I'm at. I don't even know what I want. Like, yeah, these are very lofty ideas, guys. But do, do you know what they mean for you and your body? That's our creative action right now. That's our process. That's how we bring this teaching to others. That's how we impact more people. No, we can't sit quiet. I get it. And then when we speak out, we can't, we can't be bullied. I just, want, I just want to read you a little story. I love this story. It's, it, you know, it's from, it's, it's from the Catholic Charities of Santa Clara by the CEO of Catholic Charities. And you know I'm an integrated Catholic. So the other night, my wife and I wanted some comfort food, so we drove to a Chinese restaurant in Morgan Hill and ordered our favorite dishes. At the end of the meal, we opened our fortune cookie, and mine said, compassion will cure more than condemnation. It hit me right in the gut. How often have I condemned those with whom I disagree, or who appear to have done some terrible thing, or who I believe have hurt me or ones I care about? How can I do jitsu, jiu jitsu on my own judging of people who condemn others or whose behaviors I believe are worthy of least ye be judged? And God's rain pours down on the just and the unjust alike. How do I have compassion for someone who appears to be my enemy? 
It's not just to have good intentions. I need to be mindful of the impact on others of my thoughts, my own words, my own actions. Compassion will cure more, not just for the other, but also for myself. How might my acts of compassion cure me of my condemning? Do I practice listening with empathy? Do I avoid making assumptions as to motives? Do I go the extra mile without resentment? Do I try to walk in the other person's shoes? Right? Do you see where I'm going here? I admit it's quite challenging, yet I find that when I do, then my clenched heart opens wider and I am cured more. Isn't that beautiful? My clenched heart opens wider and I am cured more. And perhaps others become aware that I have changed and that gives them the freedom to become open too. And all who come through our doors are welcomed without judgment. Whether arriving with a disability or coming from jail, from living on the streets, from being in a gang or arriving from another country with or without papers, I invite all who want to cure more with compassion. Isn't that beautiful? You know, and, and it, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this whole idea of creative action is a spiritual practice. I'm also saying, you know, this, this whole idea was, you know, in, was to treat and move your feet. And I said, well, what, what if people don't even know what treat is? And treatment, spiritual mind treatment is what we call prayer. It has a five-step process. It's, some of us call it affirmative prayer. It's, again, speaking into the positive and creating from principle, right? Well, all prayers are answered. We know this. And they're answered in the scientific method, this quantum mechanics that we use to, to prove our tradition, to prove our teaching works, is, is to know that there is power in our words and power backed by belief and power with our conviction and power with our intention. And so condemnation is a spiritual practice. It's causal. To express an unfavorable, now this is condemnation, to express an unfavorable or adverse judgment on, indicate strong disapproval of, censor, <laughs> to pronounce to be guilty, and sentence to punishment. This is, this is, uh, have, has anyone noticed this kind of going around right now? Condemnation is a spiritual practice. It doesn't say that we have to talk nice to be holy to have demonstrations, to have manifestations of our thinking, we can talk, I was going to say a bad word. We can, I don't know why, spirit, pastor with a potty mouth, come on. I was going to say, we're, we can talk and create. <laughs> okay, we can talk naughty and create naughty. <laughs> I do. I do. I watch the news because right now <laughs> I have to be informed if I can even go outside. <laughs> I mean, we have something exponentially happening hour to hour. <laughs> and and we're, we're on this kind of, we're on this countdown of hours to an election. We're at a place now where, where, where unemployment is in question. Unemployment checks are in question for people. There, there's so much going on right now, guys, that we can, we can speak into fear. We can condemn. And guess what? We will create more of that 
which we condemn. I was censored because I put it in the positive, in the affirmative, and they were not ready for, to, hear the, to hear the love language. And I understand that. I understand that we have to hear what's going on. We have to call it out. I get all that. I, I'm, I'm there. I want to learn. I'm learning. I'm educating myself. I promise you. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop in the effects. I must do something about them. And the only thing I know how to do to, to, to create something other than an effect is to create from principle. And so when I speak love language and I get attacked for it, I need to be okay with that. That's what I'm learning. Isn't that a wild thing to learn? That I, I'm going to speak a love language and somebody's going to throw apples at me and I'm going to be okay with that. I'm going to pick those apples up and bless them and I guess eat them. We don't want to waste anything, right? We can impact more people by impacting our own thinking, behavior, expressing outwardly what is true for all. You think it's safe right now to do that? You think it's safe right now to say, so-and-so is love, so-and-so is, I pray for and with that so-and-so? You know, I, um, I'm teaching this class on, on Thursday nights on Taoism, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much because for once in my life, I'm really seeing for the very first time, even though I've seen it many, 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 many times, as I studied world religions, as I got a master's degree in world religions, that all the religions are saying the same thing in a different way. I could get in a lot of trouble for that, guys. I, I could say that in some circles and boy, those apples would fly. But guess what? I'm okay with that because I know I, I'm studying these, I'm studying the exact words. Well, the translated words, because I don't speak Aramaic, you know, I don't speak Greek, I don't speak certain languages, but we've had we've had very good translations and many, many, many translations of these scriptures. And the thing about the yin yang, the thing about the yin yang that I love so much in Taoism is that there is, it talks about the opposites of this life, that everything is the yin yang, right? Jaime, we talked about this in class, right? Did we not? And don't I always say, I think this should be the planet of paradox. This should not be called planet Earth. You know, everything is opposite. Well, it's really important to have the, to have the, as Doug was saying about the rock, right? It's really important. It's really important to know what's wrong. And I think that's what is needed to know what's wrong so that what? We can know what's right. We can't, we can no longer hide from what is wrong. We can no longer hide from what is systemically wrong, which has been a groove in humanity's consciousness for hundreds of years. We can't ignore that anymore. We have to learn about it. But we also have to language something better. We have to language what we do want and by, by, by the spiritual practice of condemnation, I don't think that's going to get us where we want to go. We need an army of people willing to speak into truth. And it can't be from ignorance. In other words, I, it's not compassionate. It's not compassionate. To, to, to censor what needs to be said. It's not compassionate. It's not compassionate. We have to learn. I have to learn. What is it like for you? 
what is it like for you, our sisters and brothers of color? What is it like for you? Because I don't know. I, I don't have that experience. What it, What is it like for you to be you? I need to know that. You know, the writing in that 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 we received this week, it it said, you know, we are we meet people where they are in their life, but find ways that we offer them ways to shift their paradigms and beliefs, shifting consciousness so they have practical ways of applying this teaching to any and all areas of their lives. Wait a minute. Like, I don't think our focus needs to be on shifting someone else. I, I don't think, I don't think that's what I'm here for is, so here it says, how can we continue to impact more individuals who are currently incarcerated so they realize the truth of their, their being? Well, how, guys, this statement says that you're recognizing that they're incarcerated. So you're, you may as well stop right there. You've already labeled them. They're, they're trapped in their belief. They're stuck in their ways. They're limited in their thinking. That, that, those are labels, guys. Those are labels. That's not what we want to do. We want to we wanna hear, what is it like for you? And then knowing that that has come into my realm of consciousness, there's something I've attracted. There's something for me in it, not them. Because there is no me in them. <laughs> Duh. There's, there's no me and you. And so if I've attracted some, something to learn, it's not that I want to change you, that I want to give you something, to, that I want to make your life better. That's just not possible. I, I got to make my life better because that is something I've already agreed upon. I know I learned that I'm identifying with it, right? I, I literally spoke my truth. I spoke my truth. And, and when I got bullied, I, I disappeared. I gave up. Well, I'm just not going to hang out with those people anymore. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to them anymore. I'm just not going to share my views anymore. I'm not going to participate. I'm just going to take my toys and go home. Do, do you have that experience in your life right now? Is there someone that you're kind of afraid to talk to? Because you don't know how. You don't know if you're going to use the right words. You don't know if you're going to offend them. You don't know, you know, you just don't know. So you just kind of give up, right? Shrink? Well, that's not going to make a world that works for everyone. And now we're having definitions thrown at us, right? We're having, uh, you know, we're having language created for us that in my mind sounds causal to things I don't want to create. And then I get caught up in it because I haven't studied it. I haven't learned. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't taken the time to feel it and express it and to see if it works for me. And so I just get on the bandwagon. Yeah. <clears throat> kind of the mob, the mob mentality, right? Is that, is that, does any of this make sense it, to, to any of you? <laughs> Condemnation has become the thing to do. Much of the American public discourse is now laced with demonizing, condemning rhetoric. Are, are, we, are we right? Am I doing it? You should hear me. You should hear what goes on in here. You'd be so proud of me. A spiritual leader. Instead of the focus has to become to denounce, chastise, berate, or rebuck. We, we, we're, we're denouncing, chastising, berating instead of announcing 
claiming, proclaiming. See the difference? I'm denouncing this or I'm announcing that, you know what? I am free and we are all free. And I'm going to behave into that. It's going to be my mantra. It's going to be my, my commandment. It's going to be my mandate. When I act other than that, it's not going to feel good in my belly. But if I say that, someone's going to say, how dare you say that? You're not understanding what the, what the statement means, and you're doing tone policing. You're policing the tone it's delivered in. I'm like, well, not anymore. Not anymore, because I have never been here before. I have never seen what's going out there, what's going on out there to the degree it's going on. We're in, we're in a situation here where we need spiritual leadership to change the world so that it works for everyone. We do have problems, and we've got to identify them, but we do not have to identify with them. Does that make sense? This is a huge concept. <laughs> I'm choked up. All right, I'm going to get off my soapbox. Our teaching does not tell us to dehumanize, ridicule, criticize, or condemn people. Ask, what would love do? Let us pray. And you understand that when we have fellowship after this, you stay on in the room, stay in the Zoom room, and you can literally go into an, another room from our Zoom room with a practitioner for, for a five-minute miracle where you can get prayer no one will hear it. It's not recorded. It's private and confidential. You can also request prayer from our website, and that prayer will be given to our ecclesiastic team and prayed for for a week. We are here for each other. And so let me announce and proclaim and declare that there is a power, a power that is the, the biggest most powerful thing there is in existence it is the power of love it is the power of creativity it's the it's the creator creating creation out of itself so everything is a part of it we are all connected in this unity there is no place where it overpowers its creation, so it has to be called upon. It expects us to enjoy free will. But it also says, I am this infinite mind, this infinite power, that, that, that because it is infinite, it, it cannot be opposed. There is no opposition. There is no evil force. It is only one power and one presence creating everything out of itself. And I am that. And that is what we all are. And we can use it to the degree that we are capable of being aware of it and awake to it. So yes, we can speak hate into it. We can speak love into it. We can speak anything we want into it. And so my choice here today is to speak power into freedom and equity, into oneness and unity, into love and light and opportunity, into abundance, that there is no child hungry. There is no person that doesn't have medical care. There's, there's, there's enough here for all of us. We just eradicate the fear that says otherwise. There is no absolutely no reason for any of us to be limited to be without 
to not feel well in our bodies because we are in hate and condemnation. No, no. In the cell of every nucleus, in the nucleus of every cell is the intelligence, this infinite intelligence that we just ignite and get it, get it moving through us to experience that we are perfect, complete, and whole, period. And in every faith tradition, this has been the message. It is done unto us as we believe. So stand for what you believe. Stand for principle. I stand for love. And yes, I'm open. I'm open to hearing. I have compassion and empathy for pain, the pain of others experiencing that, that thing, that, that, that belief in that, in that rock that has been here forever. We create right here and right now a new paradigm where speaking the truth and speaking the power of love is the, is the language, is the language. It's the new religion. It's the new language that we have a planet that we take care of, that we have, you know, the animal kingdom that we take care of, that we have each other that we take care of. This is just the way it is. And I'm going to know nothing else. I deny and denounce everything other than love. I announce and proclaim and declare that I am in that God's army. <laughs> and it's, I don't have to fight for anything because it's already there given unto us as we believe. And so I'm so glad that this prayer is answered before rocks were formed. And I'm so happy to know that I just released my word into the law that knows how, that simply waits for it to be called and calls it into form. That's the way it is. I stand for that. I know it. And it is so. And so it is. Amen.
<sighs> well, I have my motto for the week. What I'm going to breathe into is what love would have me do. So if you feel like you've been given to, like I have, um, we are giving you the opportunity to give back. There are three ways that you can give back that are offered on our website at saccsl.org. Click on the donate button and then you'll be guided to either use PayPal, you can use your debit or your Visa card. You also have the choice of mailing a check to the address that is shown on your screen. And please, we no longer have the mailbox, so please do not mail it there. And now for our affirmation. I give thanks for the abundance that is mine to share and my willingness to share it, knowing that my gift returns to me multiplied many times over. And so it is. I want to interrupt this program <laughs> with an announcement. Um, there is another best kept secret in our community who produces all of this for us and makes it happen in the most beautiful way and you know she she will take a last minute inspiration that i come up with five minutes before we're to show up here and make it work for us ruth hall's birthday is tomorrow and i thought maybe we could all unmute for a minute and wish her a happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you for all you do. <laughs> and I and now we go back to our regularly scheduled programming and Debbie Putnam is going to take us there. And now it's time for more announcements. After that wonderful announcement, we'll go back to us and check our videos. Yes. The book of the month is displayed on your screen. The Metahuman Unleashing Your Infinite Potential by Deepak Chopra and Change Your, I actually can't quite read it, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, The Wisdom of the Tao by Wayne Dyer, which goes nicely with our class announcements. Two classes are happening right now and you are welcome to drop in. If you haven't joined yet, Join whenever you can. The first is The Rational Path to Mystery by Thomas Troward, who was an amazing teacher of Ernest Holmes. And the other is The Tao, The Way Within. You can see on the slides when they are, and you can talk to Reverend Sharon if you want to know more about these classes or just join the Zoom meeting and show up. We have our Wisdom Wednesdays and they are on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month. So that means no Wisdom Wednesday this week, I think. And we have Wisdom Wednesday again next week. And sometimes it is a complete surprise. Sometimes we let you know on Sunday what it's going to be. So just stand by. We also have our Kindred Connection on Friday nights, which is an opportunity for you to just connect and hang out and laugh and maybe cry if you need to. And just have that safe time with good friends from this center to keep our community, the heart going, to bless all of our hearts. And now it's time for our closing song, One Together by Jennifer Bloomer de Guzman. Hey everybody, please join me in singing our closing song. Here we go. We are one together on this path, this path of life. We are one in spirit. We remember we are the light. 
We are one together on this path, this path of life. We are one in spirit. We remember we are the light. We remember we are the light. And our affirmation is I make no secret of my connection.